Hi guys, my name is Will Goad and I'm a training consultant with Meta Communications and today we're going to be looking at your new process management tool Workgroups DaVinci. The important thing that I want you guys to understand about the tool as we look at it is that it's really designed for a couple things. It's designed to help the creative team manage the projects that they're doing for you, the jobs or the projects that they're doing for you. Um, but you might be asking, well, how does that really affect me? Well, it does in a couple of ways. One, you're going to actually be using our system to enter your request for the project. This is really helpful because it provides one common place where you can come and make a request. All that information can be captured and that information then can then be provided to the creative team so that they can provide you um, the deliverable that you're looking for in the most efficient way possible. The other place where this is really going to matter for you is that you guys are going to be um, reviewing creative proofs within our system here as well. And this again provides one common place where you can come look at all of the different versions or iterations of uh, the deliverable that you've requested, provide feedback on it, and then the designer is able to easily uh, take that feedback and incorporate it into what ultimately will be the uh, poster or email or flyer or whatever that you've requested. So with that in mind, let's take a look at how we're going to interact with the system. As I said, it's a process management tool, and the way you guys will access it is through a web browser. So the website is cbc.workgroups.com slash live, and that's how you'll log into the system, is you'll go to Firefox or Safari or Chrome or whatever other web browser that you use, um, log into the site, and then you'll use the email address and password that is set up for your email at Columbia Basin. So it, it uses the same email, so hopefully that will be simple for you guys to remember. Once you've logged into the system, you're going to come here to the request tab. That should pop up automatically. There's also a proofs tab. Um, that's where any proofs that you have to review will live. Right. And so, but, but let's focus on the request because that's how a job or a project is going to start. When you come into your request tab, you're going to see what we call the request widget here. And you're going to see a few different tabs. And I'll show you or we'll talk a little bit more about those tabs in a minute. But first, the initial thing we're going to do is we want to learn how do I submit a request? How do I raise my hand and say I need some work done? You do that by clicking the new request button here. When you click the button, it's going to ask you, do you want to submit a job request or a project request? To clarify what the difference between those two things are, is a job request is going to be a single deliverable. So I need a new poster, I need a website, I need an email blast, etc. A project request would be like requesting an event or something like that, um, kind of a bucket or basket, if you will, that will actually contain multiple jobs. right? So for now, we're going to learn how to create a job request. So I'll click Job Request, and that'll open up our request ticket here. Once the request ticket opens up, you'll notice this is going to look very similar to the form that you guys are already filling out. Um, but what you'll be asked to do is to fill out some fields here. So the first thing is we'll give the request title. This is going to be probably the job name. So I'll give it a title of Summer Bash. And then you'll see that the entry date the requester name, you, and your email, those will automatically populate based on when you're entering the request and who you're logged in as. Now we're going to come down and we're going to fill out some additional information here. What's important to note is that if it has a red asterisk next to it, it will be required information. Right now we see job type and due date are required. Um, department and delivery mail stop, those will be required as well, but at this point um, you'll just need to, you know, we, we see that these are the two that are required. So when I select job type, if I click the arrows here, I'll have a drop down list that I can grab from. So I'm going to choose a poster. And then I can come in and I can choose my department. I can also give a due date. And if you wonder what we mean by any of this information during some um, next to maybe some of the fields that might be a little confusing you'll see this question mark just go ahead and hover over it and it will tell you that the minimum turnaround time for print jobs is 10 business days web design and email campaigns take a month so just be aware of that as you're submitting the request fill out the rest of the information add some notes if you will and then at that point you'll what you'll see is based on the job type that you selected here additional fields have pulled up that are relevant to that type of job. So if it is a poster that we're requesting, I need to know the size. So I can click here and I can choose my size. 
I also need to provide a quantity. So let's go ahead and do that. And then additional info and finishing work, I can add that as well. So for example, if it's a mailer, we would re, um, enter the requested US Postal Service shipment date. For the finishing work field, if it's a poster, we might note if it would be mounted or laminated. And then I can also upload or attach a file as well. Once I upload that file, I'll see it here. I can enter a description. I also, if there's a website that's useful, I can click this arrow here and capture a link. Once I'm done, I go ahead and I click Upload. And now we can see that those files have been saved with my request. Once I've completed my request or fill it out um, in at least the majority of it, I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Now once the request is saved, I can leave it and I can go come back to it later. It'll be in the to-do tab of that request widget. Um, or I can go ahead and submit it for review. So in this scenario, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to submit the request for review. And then I'll click Yes, Proceed, just confirming that, yes, I do want to submit it. And now I can see my request is in review. If I want to check the status of the request, one, you guys will be receiving emails once the request has been reviewed, if it's been approved or sent back to you. But you can also come in here as well and look in the request tab and then look in these different folders. So the to-do folder will contain any, inf any request that I've saved as a draft but haven't yet submitted, or it will also contain maybe a request that I, I saved and submitted but it was sent back to me. The in review tab will show those requests that I have made that are currently being reviewed. And then the Approve tab will show any requests that have been approved. All will show everything. And Favorites, if, I, if there's one request that's particularly important to me, I can click the little star here, and then it will show only those requests that have been starred in the Favorites tab here. So now at this point, we're done. Um, you guys have made a request. That's how you submit a request in work groups. So what I'd like to do next is take a look at what happens when it's time to review a file. And let's go ahead and do that now. Now once it's time for you to review a creative file, you're going to receive an email that's going to look very much like this. And so all you have to do is click the review button in this link and it will open up a browser window and take you directly to that proof, logging you into the system if you're not logged in already. If there's a note that's been provided to you, that will pop up right here as well. And so you can see it and then once you've reviewed it, just simply click close and now you'll be looking at the proof. And so as we look at how we're going to provide creative comments or, or edits or markup recommendations, um, I want to show you a few things here with the tool. So this button right here is our comment sidebar. I can open it or close it by clicking on it. In the comments, I'm going to see all of my comments as well as any other comments made by users who are reviewing the document at the same time I am. They'll show here and we'll see those in just a moment. If it's a multi-page document, I can click on Pages and I'll see thumbnails of the pages that I can click on to jump right to that page. Here I can see all the reviewers that are presently reviewing and if they've made any comments. These buttons that are gray will turn red or green or yellow based on if that reviewer has approved or rejected the file. And then this Info tab will show me the job that the proof is related to, who the customer or department is, and who uploaded the file. As we continue along the top toolbar here, I can see the file name. And if I click here, I can download the file as what it is, a PDF, a JPEG, an MP4, etc. Or I could export it with comments as an Acrobat PDF or an Excel comma delimited file or an HTML file. Continuing on, you'll see this little blue button here. This will show us the version of the proof that we're on and what step we're in. And then here I can start to manipulate the document. I can rotate the pages. 
I can use this to zoom in or zoom out. I can zoom to a spot and then I'll be able to start to annotate with this button. When I click on the annotate button, I'll see that there are gonna be seven tools that are available to me. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. I have an arrow, I have a call out box, I have a freeform tool, I have a box, and then these three, I have a text selection tool. So if this is a PDF or a Word doc or a TIFF file with text in it, I can actually highlight the text. And then I can choose to just highlight it or call that text to be replaced, re insert it, or more text to be inserted after, or have the text just removed completely. Every time that I make a comment or make a markup, I have the ability to make comments as well. Again, every time I make a markup, I have the ability to make comments. And I can do that here in the sidebar. Additionally, I can attach files to my comments. So let's say I had additional copy that I wanted to add or a logo or something that, of that nature. I could say, please replace with attached. And then I could come down here and actually add that attachment. And this makes it easier, again, for you guys to be able to define exactly what you want um, to be changed, as well as for the designer to take that information and act on it, right? And these attachments, the system will take anything that you provide it. So it'll take a standard Word doc, a TIFF file, an InDesign file, um, a zip folder, et cetera. Basically, anything you give it, the system will collect and place here. The other annotation tools that are available to you are this ruler here. And so with this, I can actually get measurements of the document itself. I can also get angles, as you can see there. And you'll see by default, this is going to show in pixels. But obviously, if this is a print piece that we're looking at, I can change it over here from pixels to inches, centimeters, millimeters, etc. OK? And then finally, there's a color selection tool. So here. I could look at this and I can get the, the CMYK color code or other color codes for this. And I can capture that here. This is print, so we'll change it to CMYK. Please change. And once I'm done with all of my comments, what I would recommend is that you go ahead and click this Save All Comments button. That will save all of the comments. And then if you choose to leave the window and think about this overnight or something, you can always just click the review button in your email. It'll bring it back to you. All your, all your comments are saved. Whenever, though, you've made all the comments you're going to make and you're ready to approve or reject the file, you'll need to click this Make Your Decision button right here. And once you make the decision, you can add some notes. You can also attach a file if necessary, and you can approve, reject, or approve with changes. This is really important. If you approve, it basically means that you think this thing looks perfect. Probably not going to have a lot of markups in that case. If you reject this, you're saying, please make changes to this file. You're asking the designer. And then let me see it again, because these are substantive changes. I need to bless it. And if you approve with changes, that really means these are minor changes. Fix them and keep this thing moving. I don't need to see it again. So in this scenario, I made a lot of comments, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reject it. And now what's happening on the back end is my designer is going to be able to go in and see all of these recommended edits, make them, and then he, he or she is going to send me a new version of the proof to review. What I'll notice here before we leave this is that in the reviewer, but in the reviewer thing, I can see that I have now rejected this and that the other reviewer hasn't yet made a decision on it. So now you know how to review documents within the proofing tool. You can just close your browser window and move back on with the rest of your day. Next, we're going to look at how we can look at the new version of that proof and compare that version with earlier versions of the proof. Now, once the new version of the proof has been uploaded by the designer, you'll receive another email. Click the review link, just like we did the first time, and you'll be taken to the new version of the proof. Now, everything here is going to work the same, except what you'll notice is now this blue button shows V2. 
This is really important because if you're like me, you're probably going to forget some of the things that you've said, or maybe there are minor changes that are not easy, easily noticed, right? So what we can do is we can click here and I can actually compare the versions and it'll set them up as compared side by side. And obviously there are some pretty substantial changes here. I can see the difference in the color, um, in the text, as well as in the background image, right? But what I can also do, if I want to look a little closer, I can zoom in like we talked about. I can also use this little button up here, this overlay button. By clicking on that, that actually places the image over itself, right? And so what I can see here is I can even adjust this. So I can use this slider here to, to decide how much of each document I wish to see, right? And up here we have an opacity for the left side. So I can look at the difference between the two images. So I can say before, after, before, after. And again, allowing me to see some of those more minor changes within the document. And finally, there's this flame here that I can go ahead and highlight changes. And I can see all the differences between one file and the, and the other. Now, by default, it's always going to show you the version that you have to review, as well as the directly um, preceding version. If for whatever reason, let's say we're on version 5 and you want to see version 5 and version 1 or something like that, you can just use these buttons to select the version you want to see on the right side and on the left side. Just remember to always go back to the version that you want to review before you make your decision. So let's say I've looked at this, I've made my markups or my edits if necessary, and I'm ready to make a decision on the newest version of the proof. This is really important. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and you'll see it looks like two little windows here. This is exiting of the version comparison mode. So I'll click that. That takes me back to my new version. And then I can make my decision. And in this case, I'm going to approve it. And what you'll see now is now I'm done and I can go back to my work. And so hopefully this is going to make reviewing proofs much easier for you guys, um, particularly as it relates to juggling all of the different iterations that you're feel dealing with. The only other thing I want to mention to you guys as we look at this is that you will also be receiving some emails as we go throughout the system. For example, you might receive an email that says, the CBC admin or Julie or Teresa or whomever has been named as the designer for your job number 93 summer bash. Or you might receive an email that says a new job, your request has been approved and a new job has been created. Hopefully this will make it easy for you guys to keep track of your jobs as they go throughout the system, all of the requests that you make and the jobs that come out of that. If you have any questions, Julie is going to be your champion, so please reach out to her. Additionally, she'll be providing you guys some links that you can use to see an abbreviated version of how to submit a request, how to review a proof, etc. Thank you very much for your time, and I'm excited uh, to have you guys on board as a client.